Hello and welcome back to The Note. We haven't been talking about copper much recently for the good reason that not much has been happening in the copper market. In the last few days that's changed really quite dramatically. It's down 9% in barely over three trading days. What is going on? This plainly signals some concerns about China. With me now to discuss this is our metals correspondent, Zan Rice. Zan, thanks for joining me today. Let's start by taking a look uh, at the uh, copper price, that latest fall in context. Uh, and you can also see that for a long time, people in the equities market were taking copper almost as, a, as an indispensable gauge. We've seen that breaking of the ways in recently. W what's going on behind this most recent sell-off? Well, first thing, just, just to talk about the price, copper today is a little over $6,400 a tonne right. on the London Metal Exchange, three-month contract, and it was more than $7,000 a tonne late last week. So this so is we've significant? Seen, we've seen a significant fall. China accounts for more than 40% of global copper consumption, and this, this story of the drop is all about China. Is there particular news from China suggesting that there's going to be a reduction in copper demand, or what in particular has driven this? I mean, there's no particular copper-related news, but there, there are a few events which have, which have caused the fall. The first is, the, is the China's first corporate bond default last week, right. and that ties into fears that copper financing deals yeah. um, in China may be forced to, to unwind, unleashing a lot of copper onto the market. So people, a lot of people use copper as collateral in, in Chinese financing, as I understand it. Exactly, yeah. It's a, very, it, it's a good way of getting cheap U.S. dollar financing and investing it um, at a higher return locally. Okay, now let's take a look uh, globally at where the supply and demand balance has us at the moment. This is quite concerning. It suggests there won't be any real support, any shortage of uh, copper until 2017. Is, where, where, where do these numbers come from? Yeah, so we're in uh, the, the, the last few years and, and for a few years going forward from now, there's been a, there's been a modest surplus in the copper markets. Um, mine production and, and refined production has been increasing. Consumption is good. I mean, this year it's expected to be around mm -hmm. around four point around four point five percent growth, mostly driven by China. But there is there is still a, a surplus, and it's not until around about two thousand and seventeen that uh, you, you're going to start seeing the price really go up. I think. So there's no obvious support from fundamentals for quite a while. There's room for people to get themselves even more scared in the interim. That's right. Okay. Now let's take a look. But so far, so not not so encouraging. Now let's take a look uh, at China, which is. Uh, the centre of this, and their imports, obviously at the, the margin, the marginal consumer of copper, their imports do still seem to be rising. Yeah. How do we explain the obvious concern about this while China continues to up its purchases? Yeah. So last year, Chinese demand uh, consumption was good. Demand was good. It grew about 8.8%. But a lot of the imports into China were appear have gone into financing deals mm -hmm. rather than straight into factories and, and into, you know, to, to, to feed the domestic industry. So they're sitting in warehouses. So it, the import figures aren't necessarily indicative of physical demand. And th there's a decoupling there, and that's, that's the problem. And there may also be some understatement of the amount of surplus out there among the world. There's, there, there's that much more copper to be got through before they really need more to be dug out of the ground. That's right, especially in China. I mean, ex-China, the market is fairly tight, but in China, there, there does seem to be a ample copper around at the moment. I guess my final question, what could actually spark copper back into life? We're coming close to some really quite significant lows now. What, what would it take to get people buying again? Well, some people are saying it's already oversold um, mm. and, the, and the price is a bit lower. Quite a few analysts are, are talking about 6500 as, as the average price for this year, which is not too far away. We're off from now. Um, and I, I, don't th I don't think anyone's expecting it to go much above 7000 in the near term, give it, just given the fundamentals that we've seen. OK, Zan, thank you very much indeed. That's what we need to look out for in the copper price. It's no longer regarded as, a, as the be-all and end-all by uh, equity traders, but it's still important. It would be dangerous to take your eyes off what is going on in the copper market.